Yo, 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 guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, this video is going to be a second part on to building this stylized environment that you can see uh, behind me. Uh, you guys seem to really enjoy the first one, so I thought we might as well uh, continue and expand this area out. But before we get into that, make sure to do the usual subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so by the end of this video, I'd like to have like some kind of structure here and then kind of like a target range here. But I think to start it off, I want to adjust the materials for the terrain. I have a vague idea of what I want to do. As I saw recently, um, a game called Swords and Magic and stuff. I've been playing it uh, quite a lot. And it basically uses just a flat material for the terrain. I want to test out and see what it looks like in uh, Studio. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and go into Material Manager. And then click on the grass. Uh, Usually you'd create a new material, uh, change the base material to grass, for example. And then for the texture map, I'm literally just using a white square. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and replace this with, I believe it's this. As you can see, it is, it's not that one. There you go. It's this one. And it's just kind of like a flat shade, which works really well with um, smooth plastic materials and stuff like that. I can go ahead and create one for the ground now as well and finally for the rocks and as you can see we have kind of like this flat like really low poly look which is kind of nice uh not sure how i feel about it uh for this environment but um let me know what you guys think in the comments and then i, I maybe i uh, might switch it back if you guys don't like it but i'm gonna change the colors a little bit as this is a little bit too bright gonna try and match the uh the bushes a little bit that we have here something like this i think is fine and then i can do the same for the ground also for the water i want to make it a really like darkish blue and then mess around with the transparency a little bit there you go now i can go ahead and test it in studio just to get a vague idea of what this actually looks like i don't think it's too bad but i probably won't end up keeping this just for the fact that I prefer a little bit of color variation as this does feel too flat. But let me know, let me know if you guys like it or not. Is this um, it's quite cool. Actually, no, they just the shadows just loaded and it looks a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think, uh, whether I should keep this or not. And then we can go ahead and work on the building. For now, I'm going to go ahead and just flatten this area here because I do want a shooting range um, for a bow. And then I can just fill it in with some dirt here like so and then i can add uh, some hay bales and stuff like that in this area but now i can go ahead and move the plants a little bit and just place some more bushes around and make sure things aren't floating like this okay so both areas are prepped now so yeah let's go start making this structure i do want to fit this kind of theme here that i went for this one so i may add this like thatch uh, or hay roof or whatever it is like a thatch roof Okay, so now that I'm in Blender, I'm going to just go ahead and just delete the uh, the dock as I don't really need it for this. Okay, so I've removed the dock part. So what when it comes to buildings, I tend to mess with the pillars first. Kind of how you'd make buildings in real life, really. You add the foundations and then uh, you add in the walls and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to go and try and get a general shape with these pillars. And just expand upon this structure, basically as you can see we're slowly starting to build the frame of the structure i'm gonna try and go for like a two-piece attached uh like medievalish house uh and now all i need to do is just copy and paste this thatch roof and since i built the frame for the first structure it's really easy to just go ahead and make this one and it also keeps uh things consistent throughout the environment yeah i want the two parts of the building to feel a little bit more attached so i'm gonna flip this pillar here and just attach it to the larger piece and i'm just gonna go ahead and tilt it like this also if you haven't noticed my keybinds are at the bottom left uh, in case you were wondering now i can go ahead and just delete this side of the thatch roof i might just keep this side and then probably copy it over here like this for this part of the roof Maybe stretch it out a little bit. When it comes to filling in like roofs and like corner pieces and stuff like that. Uh, what I tend to do is I copy and paste these or I duplicate these planks here. Uh, and basically fill them in like this. And then I can go ahead and uh, 
select these vertices up here uh, enable proportional editing and just start bringing everything in even if the mesh does start to mess up you won't be able to see it uh thankfully because of the like the little end pieces like the pillars and stuff okay so i pretty much have the shape that i want here i may add like an expansion over here just to slightly lift it or something and then maybe uh just an outside shelter uh on the side of the structure here but um since it's all basically the same methods i'm just going to be duplicating these planks for the most part uh i'm going to go ahead and uh see you guys once i've finished the structure and here we are i'm pretty happy with this to be fair uh i will make some barrels crates hay bales and stuff like that just to decorate the outside um, but I'm going to probably import this first and then add those afterwards. Um, I added a little bit of an overhang like expansion thing here with a little bit of the thatch just uh, above it. And yep, I made it all connect as well. And I've made the walls around and placed some uh, windows around. I didn't bother putting windows at the back here because I know this part is going to be facing the cliff. Uh, so might as well save some triangle count, uh, some triangles there. On that note, I can go ahead and start importing. And there we go, it's imported. I do need to texture it uh, real quick and color it and stuff like that. First things first, uh, whenever I make buildings and stuff like that, I do tend to go to plugins, build rig, just an R15 rig and just check the scale of the dummy to the door and just making sure it's roughly about the same scale or a reasonable scale. Scaling is very important uh, when it comes to making games. Unless you're on purpose going for like a huge like look, otherwise it looks really, really weird. But in this case, it's perfect. So I can go ahead and delete this guy. Since this is quite of a large structure, I'm probably going to have to edit the terrain around it and just move these cliffs further back. So if I go terrain editor and just flatten this area out, uh, I'm going to need to grow it a little bit as well. There we go. Then flatten this out and then paint some ground like this. And now I can go ahead and move these cliffs further back. Okay, now to color it, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the colors off uh, this one and just go ahead and just place them on here. Okay, so now I can go ahead and just place some plants and stuff like that around the, uh, the structure just to build some visual appeal on the outside. And then I'll bring some crates and barrels and stuff in uh, a little bit later on in the video. And there we have it. The building is pretty much done. Uh, the environment is starting to look really, really nice. It's filling up with all these uh, bushes. Uh, I'm adding some small stones and stuff on the uh, edges of the buildings and stuff like that. Just to fill up empty spaces and just generally make the buildings feel like they're more a part of the environment. Um, I do want to make this uh, double-sided. There we go. That's nice. And uh, yeah, I'm going to work on the archery range here and then perhaps make some fences and some barrels and stuff like that and then probably call it there and then maybe for if you guys want it for a third video i can expand out here make a path uh, and then maybe we can add like a spring with a waterfall and stuff like that but let me know what uh, you guys want and i shall uh, do it okay so i have a pretty generic fence here uh, but it's fine for the current like style that i'm going for but one thing I wanted to uh, basically emphasize for you guys is the when it comes to making stuff like fences, which you're going to be copying and pasting a lot, uh, you want to make these as modular as possible. And by that, I mean, uh, for example, I have this fence here. If I imported this fence by itself in here, if I wanted to join another one over here, you'll have an overlapping cylinder there which will be horrible for optimization and you'll probably have some z fighting and stuff like that in your game so ideally what i do is um i have another version i remove this one here and then i can use this instead of that uh when it comes to expanding so i can just do something like this like so and then it just becomes modular and a lot easier to work with and just for the sake of it i'm going to go for one with a post either side Alrighty, so i've imported my fences here i'm going to go ahead and scale them so they're a lot smaller uh, as you can see they're quite large in comparison to the door and we know the character is roughly about the same width as the door so i can get a vague idea of how big i want the fences 
and then I can go ahead and start placing these around. As you can see here, you're starting to see roughly where like making these pieces modular is really coming in handy because I've got this middle piece here uh, that I can connect these two fences just to create this kind of uh, C shaped fence. And I can probably go ahead and group this just because I'll probably need a similar shape. Uh, for example, over here, I can just uh, rotate this like so. And then I have this piece here done as well. So it makes life a lot easier and makes certain processes a lot faster. Alrighty, so I've placed fences around the map and stuff like that, and it's starting to look really, really nice. In fact, I can probably make a game out of this environment. It's starting to look that nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click play here. Uh, there's probably something I forgot to anchor, but I'm sure we'll find out. Nope, it looks like everything's all good. But uh, as you can see, the environment's looking very, very nice. Again, let me know what you guys think about the... Um, the flat materials whether you prefer uh or whether you don't like it or not and stuff like that i'm still a bit 50 50 but i don't think it's too bad i think it fits this current environment it's crazy how much this uh windshake script actually like brings your environments to life um you really just have to stand still and appreciate the leaves moving and stuff like that it makes your environment so so nice and there we go we have the targets in this target area added some little stones as well and stuff like that i'm not gonna lie i did forget to press record uh mid process of me coloring and all that kind of stuff but you too big of a deal you didn't miss too much but yeah if we go ahead and play here we now have the targets all nice i did add some more grass on the terrain uh, on the outskirts because this dirt patch was a little bit too big but uh, overall it's looking quite nice i think the last thing that's left to do is just adding some barrels and stuff like that but i'll probably do that in the next video as i've already added a bunch of uh, new things and detail on this uh on this map already i have noticed that when it comes to these custom materials the lighting takes a little bit to load in and it does look quite bad at the start but it's quite nice once the, once the shadows load in and stuff like that but yeah that's gonna be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed maybe learned something new in this video let me know if you should make a part three i probably will anyways because i am really enjoying making this and maybe give me some suggestions of what i could put on this map uh, but anyways thank you guys for watching have a great day peace